the base bar versus the B bars. How do they compare and what are the different exercises you can do on them? I've received that question so many times in the comments. So that's what this video is going to be all about. How's it going my gymless friends and welcome back to another video. You know, you might have noticed that I'm in a different location for this video. I'm actually at my in-laws house. They are on vacation at the moment and I'm here to just water the garden, get the mail, things like that. And I brought my gear and I figured, you know, why not shoot a video with a change of scenery? So nice change of pace for me and I hope you enjoy it too. All right, I think this looks like a good spot. Got my water, got my camera, got my mic. I think we're good to go. All right, so in this video, when I talk about the comparison between the base bar and the B bars, I'm mainly gonna focus on the design of both of them and the different exercises you can do on each, how they differ, that, that'll be the bulk of it probably, but also the you know usability, the assembly and storage as well. Now, when you look at the base bar and the B bars side by side, it's pretty obvious that they are very similar in design. In fact, the B bars are essentially just two base bars that connect together at the feet. All right, the feet connect at these crossbars and then you have pins that go in to secure them. So really the B bars are just two connected base bars. Both of them are height adjustable and they have two settings, right? There's a low setting and a high setting. And I will put the measurements of both on the screen as I'm saying this, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I'm going to check their website. And in case you're curious and you wanna read more about the specs, you can go to their product pages. I'll put the links in the description box down below and they have specs for each of the products on their product pages. So really the design is the same because you're just getting two base bars with the B bars, right? But the design's a little bit different because since the B bars connect, there's that feature of the, the feet connecting with the crossbar to make it extra sturdy. And that's something I really like. I wasn't expecting that actually with the B bars because I've used the Liebert equalizer bars, which are a totally separate product made by a different company. And they're basically two freestanding large parallettes. And the thing about that is when you have two freestanding objects, you know, like parallettes that are not connected, um, they have a tendency to wobble and can fall over more easily, whereas the B-bars being connected are super sturdy. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that the way that they assemble is slightly different. Right? They both use pins and you put the pins through holes. You line up holes and then you stick the pin through and that's what's gonna hold the thing together. It's, you're basically connecting a U-shaped bar to two of these T-shaped bars, right? The T-shaped bar has feet and uh, the pins connect them and that's how you set up a base bar, right? There's two pins on each side, so four pins total on a base bar. But then with the B bars, you're connecting two base bars together. So that's eight pins right there. But then you also have the crossbars that connect at the feet. Each side has an additional four pins. So you're looking at 16 total pins for the B bars. So it's four times the amount of work to set it up. Now, does that make it an inferior product? No, but I just wanted to mention for people, and I said this in my B bars review video, if you're expecting the B bars to be something that you can quickly, you know, raise to the high level and drop it down to the lower setting, so you can, you know, between sets, you can change the setting. It's not like that, all right? It's gonna take you minutes to change the settings. All right, now let's dive into the exercises, which I'm sure most people are clicking on this video for. So with a single base bar, or just the base bar alone, it's one single straight bar, and that's gonna allow you to do body weight rows, whether pronated or supinated grip. It's also going to allow you to work on your front lever, which is basically, it's very similar to rowing, except you know, you're taking your feet off the floor. So if, you're, if front lever is on your list of goals and that's your main focus right now, then a base bar alone will help you get there. In addition, it is sturdy enough to do um, straight bar dips. So doing dips on a horizontal bar is kind of like the top of a muscle up. And I will say that you can work on strict muscle ups using a base bar, but you need to have some kind of counterweights to put on the feet to prevent it from rocking. So at home I have 90 pound dumbbells that I can lay on the feet and that keeps it nice and sturdy so I can work on strict muscle ups. But if you don't have counterweights, then I wouldn't recommend working on the muscle ups. Additionally, you can raise to the higher setting and you can work on pull up and chin up progressions. And because it's still kind of low to the ground, these of course are going to be done in an L sit fashion. So with your legs straight out in front of you. 
which is good though. I mean, it's different than a, a normal pull-up, but it's strict and it's going to build a lot of strength and it's, it's gonna work your, your upper body a little differently, but in a good way. If you're curious about the mechanics of an L-sit pull-up, I explain it all in my L-sit pull-up tutorial. So make sure you check that out, especially if you have a base bar and you haven't learned how to do an L-sit pull-up yet. Of course, there are other miscellaneous exercises you can do with a base bar. Like you can do inverted hangs, where you have your feet and legs straight up in the air, holding yourself kind of inverted. Uh, that's actually a good lead up to the front lever, by the way. And you can do um, neutral grip, right? If you grab the bar, in a neutral grip, you can do L-sit commando pull-ups as another example. And you can do different variations of core exercises. Like for example, uh, hanging L-sit to leg raise. That's one thing that I do quite a bit. But aside from some you know, miscellaneous creative exercises, that's the bulk of what you would do on a base bar. And of course, you can always connect a band to the bar and do assisted variations using a resistance band. Now with the B bars, you can do all the exercises I just mentioned for the base bar, plus having two parallel bars opens some doors for other opportunities. For example, one thing you can't do on the base bar, but you can on the B bars is dips, all right? Parallel bar dips, because now you have two bars running parallel next to each other. And with this, um, think of just about anything you would do on parallettes, like L-sit and V-sit, um, what else, um, like, you know, planche work, even hand balancing if you want. I personally don't do any handstands on the B bars, although I've seen other people do that because it is sturdy enough, but I'm, I'm afraid of falling, so I stick to parallettes, or, you know, my preference is just with my hands flat on the floor. That's my favorite way to do handstands. And of course, you can raise the B bars up to the high setting and you can do neutral grip hanging exercises, which is something you cannot do on the base bar alone. So basically anything that you do on parallel bars or parallettes or anything hanging with a neutral grip, that is you know, the variety of exercises that the B bars open up for you. So those are the exercises you can do with both, all right, the base bar versus the B bars. And regarding storage, uh, both of them kind of store the same way. I just want to mention that, of course, the B bars will take up more room because there's two bars plus the crossbars. But both of them store by you, you take out the pins and then you turn the feet so they're running the same direction as the U bar so that the, the U bar and the feet are flat. And once you have them like that, you put the pins back in and then they can lay flat. You can store them under your bed, in a closet, wherever. Or you can put them in your trunk and you can drive somewhere like I just did to come here. And I will say that after having both pieces of equipment for a while, I really do think the B-bars are the most versatile equipment. Like I said, I've used the Liebert equalizer bars and other forms of tall parallettes that are like free moving. And what I really like about the B-bars, having them connect and especially the high and low setting, there's just such a variety of exercises. I actually would say the only piece of equipment that I have that beats the B-bars in terms of versatility are gymnastics rings. But I, I love gymnastics rings, but I have to say one of my biggest complaints is that I don't have a lot of places to hang them. Right now, the only place where I hang them safely is in my garage from an I-beam pull-up bar. And for those of you who bought a base bar already, and you might be sort of kicking yourself and thinking like, ah, oh, man, I wish I would've waited for the B-bars. Well, the good news is, that Base Blocks now makes a conversion kit. I, I don't remember if they call it a conversion kit or an add-on kit or an extension or something like that, but I will put a link in the description box. There'll be a lot of links down there in this video. And uh, yeah, you can buy this, this conversion kit and it's essentially all the equipment you need to convert your base bar into B bars. All right, everybody, I hope this video was helpful. If you've been wondering how these two products differ, what are the different exercises you can do on each, all right, and if I clarified anything for you, please hit that like button because that tells YouTube to promote my video to more people, to rank it higher, all that stuff. You know, it makes the algorithm happy. And hey, don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn how I work out. I haven't had a gym membership in years, all right? So if you want to learn how to work out with no gym necessary, how to get fit, stay fit, and how to eat healthy, make sure you stay tuned to Minus the Gym because that's what I'm all about, all right? and I'll see you in the next video.